thank you for visiting the Dishes Mitigation Section Webinar Archive. The webinar you are about to view was created by Dishes and presented live for a prior FEMA mitigation grant cycle. It has been edited to include content that remains relevant to current FEMA mitigation grants. However, you may hear information regarding prior grants being discussed during the question and answer portion. Specific grants mentioned during the webinar are no longer open for applications, but there may be current grant opportunities available. For information on currently available grants or if you have questions about mitigation in general, please contact Dishes Mitigation at the email address listed. New funding is made available annually and each time there is a major FEMA disaster declared within the state. Thank you for your interest in mitigation and we hope you find the following webinar helpful. Great, thanks. Alicia, you can go ahead and move to that next slide for me, please. Thank you. So the benefit cost analysis, BCA, the concepts, the intent is to evaluate those proposed mitigation projects uh, prior to your funding. FEMA wants to make sure that they are cost effective. Um, that cost effectiveness is shown by taking the project's total net benefits, dividing them by the total project costs, which gives you the benefit cost ratio, your BCR. If your BCR reflects a 1.0 or greater, then the project is considered cost effective. Uh, to ensure this is a cost effective project, FEMA does require that you use their FEMA approved methodology, which is what we're going over right now with you, that uh, BCA toolkit version 6.0. Uh, these slides, again, if you ever need them, we will have them available uh, through either a PDF version or up on our website, but you can always reach out to them, uh, reach out to us as well. Uh, next slide for me, please, Alicia. So going right into the introduction of the BCA Toolkit version 6. Next slide, please. So to get the version uh, 6.0, you will be able to find that at the FEMA website. That link is there for you as well. Um, even Googling the BCA 6.0, you'll find this link. Keep in mind, though, that users will need to have Excel 2013 or later, but there is also the Excel online version as well that you can use. Um, here you see a screenshot that is taken from uh, online and showing that highlighted box is where you would click to start the download for your toolkit. Next slide, please. So some initial steps in order to start a new project or even get this uh, uh, BCA toolkit going is when you go into this, you will see in that upper right hand corner, uh, it's like an icon that has like the scales of justice on it and FEMA BCA version 6.0 beneath it. You're gonna go ahead and click that icon. What happens then is the BCA calculator uh, will, ap uh, will appear. And in order to add a new project, you will click the open calculator, which opens a new window and you will see the add project option. You'll go ahead and click that to begin uh, adding your information within the BCA toolkit. Next slide, please. One of the main goals is developing the BCA toolkit is to reduce the number of the manual input data fields. Most of the information regarding any input is available at, uh, by clicking that help button with that little icon uh, that you see in that upper right hand corner. Keep in mind that an information box after this is clicked, an information box will open 
that will, uh, when you utilize the help button, as a general rule, always be sure to close this dialog box after reviewing the content. Default values are auto-populated within the toolkit, and in order to override this and enter a custom value, which you may need to do, you will want to make sure that that toggle is marked to no. That's that arrow button that is uh, streaming across your screen there. If you are putting in custom data, remember it is very important that you provide the supporting documentation and any necessary comments. Next slide, please. Project configuration. So most of this information is pretty self-explanatory, right? Project title. This project title should match what you have on your sub-application. Whatever that naming system is, it should be consistent throughout both the application, your BCA, and any supporting documentation. That is just a sample um, right there, you know, town of sample underscore Main Street Culvert upgrade. Your property location is the physical address of the project. Uh, using the lat long is typically a common GPS coordinate. Um, the structure, hazard, and mitigation type, those are going to all be drop down selections. Be sure when you are dropping those and picking, you are going to pick those that are best related to your project. Uh, you know, your property structure type your primary hazard, that is what you're gonna do. And you can see on that screenshot, that pop out is gonna be a step-by-step -step, uh, option. Next slide, please. Thank you. Damage and frequency relationships. So this screenshot is the same as what we were just looking at, but focusing on that bottom part, the damage and frequency relationship based on. So in regard to the options of what to pick for the project you're looking for is to show that it's cost effective. Uh, you have model damages, historical damages, and professional expected damages. Depending on what you're looking to complete, this is where you would pick those options. So for the model damages, you would select this option if you're performing the analysis on a property, regardless of past history, excuse me, damage history. You can see there that the results for the selected hazard will be modeled uh, based on the inputs provided. Your historical damages, You'll select this if historic damages and losses and the dates or years are available. So if you have, you know, previous storm events, uh, you've worked with FEMA on some public assistance, you will be able to provide that historical damage. Um, provide some samples here for the sources of those damages, insurance claims, uh, repair records, those project worksheets from FEMA. The professional expected damages, you would select this option if the scientific data shows how much damage would result if a given event were to recur. So an example here, a study for a drainage improvement shows the projected flood depths for a group of homes, if the 100 year flood were to occur, using the flood depth, calculate how much damage would occur. And we'll go over a little bit about that um, recurrence intervals a little bit further in the, the program. Next slide, please. So for generators, I think many on this call will be interested on this one. 
So for generators, it's important to note that modeled damages module is not available, which is what we went over uh, in the previous slide. So in order to set up the BCA analysis for generators, the damage and frequency relationship needs to be historical damages or professional expected damages. For your hazard type, infrastructure failure can be selected because the project will mitigate power loss or uncategorized, uncategorized can be selected when the multiple hazards are impacting the critical facility. Next slide, please. Thank you. When you're starting on your cost estimate, these are the details that you will need to have available or details uh, regarding your project useful life, which is the length of time your action will provide protection. Most of this information that you're going to see is needed in the BCA echoes and emulates what information is in your application. So that project useful life, again, is a life of time that your action will provide protection. Your initial project cost, that is the total cost of your project, keeping in mind that this is more than just your construction costs but it also ex excludes any management cost. The number of maintenance years, this usually defaults to the project useful life. Your annual maintenance cost, this is the annual cost for upkeep of the proposed project. Annual uh, maintenance costs, even if it's a drive-by, checking on that culvert monthly, bi-monthly, that type of stuff is what you should have in mind when you're uh, thinking about your maintenance cost. And then that total mitigation cost is auto calculated from the inputs from above. Next slide, thank you. So damage frequency assessments. So providing the year of analysis, which is usually your current calendar year. Your property was built. Again, you can see the asset that's being mitigated, right? So your buildings, utilities, roadways, uh, when was your culvert placed? That information would go into that data. Your analysis duration, this is an auto calculated from the details above. Professional or expected historical damages before mitigation. Each damage before mitigation will have a row for each event, whether again it's that historical or expected. And your recurrence interval is the frequency of the event which caused the damages. Next slide, please. So your recurrence interval is the frequency of an event which caused the historic damage. The table on this slide shows the recurrence interval probability of an occurrence and the percent of occurrence within a year. The USGS clarifies that the recurrence interval is based on the probability that the given events will be equaled or exceeded in any given year. Next slide, please. Uh, a little bit more on that recurrence interval. Determine the recurrence interval. So working specifically within historical damages, uh, note the requirement for analysis is minimum of one known event or three unknown frequency events. 
if you have three unknown frequency events that are pro uh, provided, there is a built-in unknown frequency calculator that features the auto-calculated uh, RI values. And you can see in these call-out boxes here. Typically assumes that events are occurring in different years. And if more than one damaging event has occurred in a single year, the user should request guidance from that BCA helpline. We have that information available for you as well. Next slide, please. Here are some of the additional uh, recurrence interval resources to help with that information. Uh, you can see here it has the National Weather Service if you have had damages due to storms or weather events, the uh, Geological Survey, and then additional information from the USGS. Next slide, please. Continuing uh, with the benefit cost analysis, you have that standard benefit, the ecosystem that you see here pulled out. These benefits uh, are particularly great for if you are working on an acquisition or any project that helps create an open space. Social benefits are projects that provide services to the community. How many residences does this project serve? How many of those residences work? This type of information. Benefit cost summary, this is auto-populated and results in your benefit cost ratio. Next slide, please. So this call out is a little hard uh, to see on the screen, but uh, it, when I read it out, you'll be able to, to pull that. So, Roads and bridges or projects affecting roads and bridges. These are the information that you will want to uh, make sure that you have. Estimated number of one-way traffic detour trips per day. Additional time per one-way detour trip. This has to be in minutes. Number of additional miles caused by that detour. Economic loss per day of loss of function. Use default. Yes, you will want to use the default. Or if, again, if you have that documentation uh, to back up what may be different than the auto or the default, you will want to provide uh, that documentation as well and choose no, and then provide your value. So if you have a road um, that has a large neighborhood, um, a school, a hospital, that type of information that you cannot access when that road is flooded out, these are the information that will help back up your benefit cost. Next slide, please. So when you are ready and done with your BCA, your BCA submission will consist of a BCA file in your Excel format and a BCA report that can be in that PDF version. Once you have all of that information, you have your BCR, you'll be able to pull that report and view it by clicking view report. That arrow brings you over to that uh, view report option. To place your cursor on top of the page, you're going to drag it down to view your Excel files. 
I know it's a little difficult to see on this screenshot. And then you can save those files for your future, uh, future use or reference. Using your print report, you can either save it as a PDF or print it. Make sure that you have a separate folder for all of your supporting documentation that has that uh, consistent naming. And then once your BCA submission is final, check your comment boxes and uh, as well as the references to all of your documents. And because they are fairly large files, you're going to want to zip them. Place all of your files into a zip. Again, with those consistent uh, naming uh, throughout your application, BCA, and all attachments. All right, go ahead to the next slide. That was a lot of information. Beth, hey, this is Dad. Yeah. I think uh, just in the interest of not, uh, we have to get through the rest of the um, of the sections. Uh, let's hold all questions uh, till the to the to the end. We have two more sections, I believe, to get to. Yep. So uh, okay. we'll do all uh, all questions at the end, so we don't push the content uh, past the hour. Perfect. Sounds good. All right, Alicia, you can bump right over for me. Two, two more slides. One more. Thank you. So pre-calculated benefits. Uh, the pre-calculated benefits are here to assist with streamlining the grant application process. Those projects that have pre-calculated benefits are what you see here. Those acquisitions, those buyouts your elevation, as well as hospital generators. Uh, there is a link here that shows you the pre-calculated benefits within the FEMA guidance. So your acquisition, if a cost of the project is under 323,000 per structure and located in the uh, SFHA, that's the Special Flood Hazard Area, then no BCA is required. For elevation, those same prerequisites, uh, except for the cost, the two, 2005 per structure, no BCA is required. The bio elevation local multiplier can be added to the threshold cost results based off higher cost in geographic location. Uh, that reference is there. Hospital generators, uh, just around you know six ninety five per hospital building gross uh, square footage BGSF in urban areas and twelve very specific number twelve sixty two per hospital BGSF in rural areas. Uh, some of the caveats here is that they must have an emergency department and a standalone solution. Again, this reference here uh, for the FEMA guidance will be available. And that screenshot there just shows some of the reflected um, pre-calculated benefits. Next slide, please. Again, here are some additional resources. These slides will be available. If not, you know how to reach us. We can get these over to you. You can go ahead, Alicia, and skip to so we get into the last section. One more for me. Thank you. So again, that was a lot of information about the BCA. I do just want to touch on a little bit about, uh, again, that high-level review about the application. 
So the applications are reviewed on a first come basis. Uh, the benefit cost analysis is the responsibility of the sub applicant. Of course, we are here to assist and help you. Uh, as Thad mentioned, uh, we will be looking to have additional webinars uh, to assist with you uh, in the development of that BCA. Uh, once we get those applications, DISHES will provide an RFI, those are requests for information, to your sub applicant. You will have 10 business days. Uh, the goal is to have those RFIs due by May 6th. Um, dates may change, but still keep in mind that you have 10 business days to complete and return any RFIs uh, to us here at DISHES. DISHES will provide completed applications for all eligible projects to the New York Review Panel for their review, scoring, and priority ranking. And those eligible applications based in priority off from the Review Panel will be sent to FEMA no longer than August 5th. Uh, it is important to reiterate, even if you are the first to send an application, that does not necessarily change your uh, priority ranking uh, through the review panel. Next slide, please. Here is the technical assistance information, uh, contact information rather, <clears throat> to get in touch with us so we can make sure that we are providing you with the uh, best available uh, assistance, the technical assistance, not only with your application development, but again, with the BCA. Uh, our phone number is 518-242-5219. Our email is the HMGP4480 at uh, dhses.ny. Gov. And we did have some construction on our website, so we do have a new link. You have it there, but most of you found the webinar link on there, if not through your email. And that is the brunt of the information. All right, thank you, Beth. So we have uh, some questions here in the um, in the Q and A, um, and uh, the first one, uh, which I will um, read and then um, give to Mark, is uh, if it is a flooding project, will, there will be a spec uh, no spec there will not be a specific property. There are multiple properties and can be quite a large uh, be quite a large geography. What to put in the property location field? Hi, that that. Thank you for that question. Okay. Um, without knowing more on the project, it's uh, it'll be difficult to define it, but. A rule of thumb is for your sub application, if you have a listing of the properties um, and you're going to say that the project protects, let's say, rows of, uh, let's say, residential homes or uh, what was it, industrial properties in one area, the one possibility is if you can find a center uh, point, reference point for the either the community or the, or the project area, that latitude, longitude can be specified uh, for the BCA toolkit. Uh, the alternate being if you're going to aggregate the project, meaning each structure gets its own BCA analysis, then it'd be a one-to-one -one entry, meaning if, let's say, your project's on 2323 Mockingbird Lane, then that address gets entered and you work your way through each and every property. It depends on the scope, but given that you said large geography, uh, we would like to eventually get more data. 
so you can reach out to us and we'll we'll find the best possible answer on how to enter that into the BCA. Gotcha. So would it be fair to say that for the purposes of the application, you put a center point just you know because that's the project location. However, as you then develop, um, let's say it's protecting multiple properties and you're using, um, let's say the elevations uh, uh, are your difference in elevation for a series of homes, then those would all go in as structures later in the BCA. That, that's correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. And again, this is, uh, you know, we, we, these are the technical questions that we can help you through as you try to you know take that first crack at your BCA. Um, but I think we answered the initial question of where would you, what would you use as the, as the point of, uh, you know, your GPS for the, for the project um, itself. Um, the next question from uh, Fiona Matthew, uh, another question from Fiona is, can we go back into a saved BCA to modify it? Okay, that this is Mark again. Um, so for that, the answer is yes. As long as you have the source Excel file or you're working BCA online, once you've gotten through your first, what we call a run, and you've gotten to the finish button and saved it, uh, you can reopen that file uh, again, either in Excel or on on a, what is it, Excel online and re-go to the tabs and modify the data. So let's say you have to update a cost field or you have to change a damage number, you do that and then just make sure you hit finish uh, at the end to save that data. And then at that, at that time, we recommend you update the BCA report so it reflects the newest data. Uh, we've seen before in prior applications where the BCA was updated but not the report, so there was a mismatch. So just be sure you update both at the same time. Gotcha, thank you. And the next question uh, I think I can handle um, is uh, there a more current BCA reference guide than, excuse me, the 2009. So I believe you're referring to the slide uh, that has all of the reference material on it. And there actually is uh, because we were, we updated it um, over the last couple of days. So, one of the links in there, um, Mark, it was the one, um, if you could go back, Alicia, to the, um, to the slide with the links on it, uh, as you're trying to do that, I'll just describe it. One of the links on there is for the training, and if you open up that link um, uh, in, in, uh, uh, from this, you know, we'll provide this as a PDF, it has a series, you go to, it takes it to the most current FEMA page, and there are a series of um, trainings um, that you open that can walk you through all parts of the BCI. So the 2009 is still a, is still, is a, still a reference that we put in there. However, all of the updated, um, all of the updated uh, FEMA offerings are in that reference slide. Uh, right, the next question uh, coming from Katie Bryson is what are new to this? We are new to this process and have a location with flood mitigation needs. We are currently coordinating with the site team to see what historical damages there were. Do these damages need to have been known by FEMA at the time of damages as well? Is there other proof we can provide for historical damages. All right, so I can take this one. Uh, no, they do not have to be a FEMA, you know, FEMA does not have to know about them at the time of damage. Certainly if it's uh, a declared disaster and there's some kind of FEMA record, whether it be, uh, you know, individual assistance or NFIP claims or uh, PW, um, you know, for those that are working FEMA, PA, public assistance, PW would be a record of damage. Certainly it's helpful. That is a, that is a uh, document, uh, documented damages. Um, but you can provide other proof 
um, that has nothing to do with FEMA. So ultimately, you know, the best thing would be if you had, you know, you know, uh, true cost records of, of the event. Now we get it. Not every um, damage or disaster has that at your fingertips. Certainly there's plenty of, um, you know, types of damage, road washouts, culverts, et cetera, where the DPW team may just go out there uh, and fix it uh, and then, you know, keep going on with their jobs. We get that. So, um, you know, ultimately the top level would be that cost documentation, but then anything that you have after that, um, you know, starting with, um, you know, notes from meetings or, or just uh, newspaper clippings, um, you know, anything that you can confirm, you start to confirm that there was damage there and to what level, then you can extrapolate damage, you know, if need be, um, and try to describe that in the BCA, right? So, um, you, we need to pre prove something happened um, and document it as best we can. You know, certainly there's also, you know, uh, USGS has great records on rainfall, those kind of things. So, so there's definitely other ways to document it. Uh, let's see, any, do we have any other questions? I'm not seeing, so I think you guys also, if you, uh, you see on your button here, I think since we do have a considerable amount of time left, uh, if anybody would like to ask a question, I believe uh, you have a raise hand function that might, uh, and I think I'm not the, I'm not the controller, but I think we can unmute people individually. Um, anyone have any question though? Any other questions want to get typed in? All right, well, just give people another minute. You know, we have the full amount of time. Again, we, you know, realize this was really high level, but, um, you know, we want to, because of the, you know, the sort of the need for applicants to take their first best uh, crack at getting a BCA, you know, get the particulars entered into a BCA, the location and all that kind of thing, and get it to us so that the team here has something then to provide technical assistance on. Um, we thought it would be a good idea to start out with, you know, here's how you download it. Here's the things to try um, to put, uh, to, to gather, to get it going for you. Um, we do plan on having uh, another um, another one in the near future. Uh, while we're on, I'll give everyone a um, uh, I'll give everyone a, uh, another uh, heads up on another training that's coming out. We're going to do an application development training in the coming weeks, I believe. Don't quote me on this, but it's Wednesday. Uh, the second, you'll all, everybody who participated in this webinar will now be on the email list, but we're going to do a, you know, how do you do your best to fill out the application portion of it on the second that will, um, you know, that'll give everyone sort of the baseline on the two documents, you know, the minimum two documents that we need to sort of really provide technical assistance, which is take your best effort at getting us that application filled out and also the BCA get it into us to help you with that process. Everything that we do for you up until uh, the deadline is just considered technical assistance. So if you you know send us in a sort of um, your best effort, but it's not complete um, application that does not hurt your chances. Um, you know, the deadline um, as of right now is still officially April 1st, um, nothing 
you know, sort of approved to be said yet, but I would, you know, watch the airwaves. I think that will be changing in the coming days. Um, okay, we do have a couple more questions coming in. Uh, Rich, uh, I'm going to butcher this. Uh, let's just say Rich. Let's say Rich has a question. I prepared a BCA for a brick application. Can I submit the same one? You sure can. Um, yes, if you we we recommend that everybody um, who wants to um, you know who has a mitigation project submit to all available funding sources. If you submitted for brick. Um, and were not selected because it was uh, just because they don't have, you know, there's it's a limited funding or, or even if you had it was 2021, you haven't heard yet. You want it to be considered for uh, for this grant. Um, certainly uh, you can do that too. Uh, you could just reach out through the email address um, and we'll work with you directly to to have you convert your application, uh, not convert, but submit what you need to so you have a duplicate application under HMGP. Um, Beth, he has a, a follow up as well is if there's any way to get uh, critique or feedback on that previously submitted BCA. Absolutely, so that would be part of the technical assistance process. So now that we know you have one rich, um, you know, again, that would be something that we can work on. Um, we can. Um, we could pull that out of the, if you want to just put in the, um, either reach out to us by the email address or, you know, put in, in so we would know which, um, which application, you know, which town and, and brick cycle it was so we can easily find it. But yes, we can, we can grab that and look at it. And um, if it was, you know, in the last two years, it was uh, likely reviewed and and has notes on it. So um, certainly that is um, uh, the best thing to do. Like I said, is we um, uh, the HMGP forty four eighty at dishes dot ny dot gov is our email uh, address. Just send us a quick note and we'll we'll get that one in. Get you into the technical assistance pipeline. Um, uh, we do have another one. The the recording, uh, Katie. We're we're working on that. We're having a little technical issue uh, in regard of getting it up on the website. So we don't necessarily have a definitive date that this recording will be available. Um, in regard to uh, Cynthia, the the PDF that'll probably do, be done in the next few days, um, and we can see about getting that posted. Otherwise, you can reach us at our email, the HMGP uh, 4480 at DHS, um, DHS, DHS at ny.gov, uh, and we can get your email directly and we can send that, that PDF um, for, directly at you for your reference. Yes, and, and actually a good point, um, Beth, I think what we can do, we have these slides PDF, um, we can um, we can email them out to all the attendees. I believe um, Alicia's on with us too, right? So I believe, um, you know, we can um, just put them as an attachment to an email blast out mm -hmm. to everyone that was on here. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm not the technical expert, but I believe we can. And, uh, and I do understand a website update is coming. So it's our goal to get this along with other previous recordings posted in the near future. Um, let's see. Relationship between the BCA and HASIS is another question. So um, let me take my first uh, crack at that and uh, then I'll, I'll pass it off to you and, and Mark if you want to elaborate. But so HASIS is a, you know, is a, is a good source, um, you know, of data for uh, pre predicted damage, predicted effects. So HASIS, 
in my opinion, you know, in, in, in my mind would be a, um, a source that would um, help you verify the, the, the risks that can be faced, right? So we didn't get too far into the weeds here as far as past damage versus, versus expected damage, right? So most of what we talked about here was using past damage. Um, but however, as we get into, you know, more uh, complicated BCAs and, and webinars, we'll talk more about, um, you know, I always use the example, if you could have a, a structure in a 100 year flood zone that never experienced a 100 year flood, right? So what would the effects be if in fact it got hit? Um, so I think, um, you know, and that takes sort of science and an engineer who's willing to, you know, to, to give an engineer statement on the predicted damage if a certain level of event was to be experienced um, by that structure or whatever the case may be. Um, so, but anyway, some of the driving um, data behind that could be hazardous. Beth, do you have and anything? No, I was going to say for those that, that may not uh, be familiar with hazardous. Oh, yes, thank so, you. So, yeah, that's okay. So, it's a FEMA. Uh, tool FEMA program, I guess. Uh, it's a, a, a GIS, the Geographic uh, Information System, based off of um, estimating risk uh, from earthquakes to floods to hurricanes and the impacts uh, and effects of that. Uh, it is, I believe, now a free um, GIS software available through FEMA. Um, I, I may not be correct on that. I thought I heard, saw somewhere that it is it is uh, now free. But yeah, it's uh, another tool um, to help with um, hazards and predictability. Yeah, we will take that question as we do with all of these and get some more information, follow up information on hazards and is it now free? Um, you know, it's a, it's, it, it really gets used in planning um, in the local and state planning efforts, um, hazard mitigation planning efforts. So let, let us get some more information on, on hazards and its availability. Um, and 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 uh, get that out to you after as part of the FAQ after we get uh, through the webinar. So the next question uh, is from Jack. What does it mean per by per structure in PowerPoint page twenty five? So this is in regard to. Um, I'm assuming either the elevation or the buyouts is what you. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So is what Jack is referring to. Right. Um, so Alicia, if you could just go back to 25 just to make sure um, while we're doing that, um, I would, uh, let's see if I would just make sure it's the right one. Yeah. So, right. So basically let's talk about the acquisition or elevation. So if you were to have 10 homes that you wanted to do a buyout, as long as the average, you know, uh, cost um, um, didn't exceed that 323,000 per structure, or put another way, if it was 10 homes, your total project cost couldn't exceed $3.23 million total. But you could have some homes go over that, and you could have some go homes go under that as long as you aggregate it and it doesn't come above that average cost per structure. Same thing for elevation, uh, you're good to go. Uh, Ted, you may want to point out on our slide, we have a screenshot of three properties for each oh, yeah. project type. With the actual uh, calculations, so uh, team, for those going more than three properties, the principle still applies. And if you want to include a memo or a short document that outlines the same calculation with all the cost supported, you know, so say you have a 10 property acquisition, then we recommend you carry out a similar calculation as you see on slide 25. 
Thank you, Mark. And while we're here, just since we're looking at the slide, you know, the hospital generator guidance um, came out uh, just, I think it was September. You know, there's been certainly a focus on healthcare uh, facilities and, and their importance um, in the pandemic, obviously. Um, so this new hospital generator, um, it's, a, you know, it's not quite as straightforward as that, you know, easy number for acquisition or elevation, um, or it's just a single number. You got to do some math based on the square foot of it, square feet of it. But I think it's a very, um, I think this is an opportunity, especially in rural areas um, where you may have um, limited healthcare facilities uh, within a geographic area that provide emergency services um, and this so the generator is a standalone solution meaning it would you know provides enough power to keep it going it doesn't rely on other you know systems to to do the power but provided you have you can put in a generator that is you know going to keep the function going um, through through lights out and also that facility has, and again, and this is just FEMA says, just an emergency department. Um, you know that does not, in my mind, necessarily mean it is only strictly, um, you know, true emergency room type scenarios. If there's an emergency department as part of a, a you know, another uh, healthcare facility, um, even if it's limited to the to the patients in that facility, um, that that could qualify as well, right? So I think FEMA and certainly the state of New York um, is putting um, a lot of um, uh, energy into, into trying to you know, assist these hospitals, especially in rural settings where there, you have one hospital go down and it's really a blackout for a wide area of uh, coverage. Uh, that that is a that's an important step I think in in the pre-calculated benefits as well. And uh, one other thing I'll say uh, as regards to pre-calculated benefits, um, you know, this really comes up in post-flooding events, um, and I wanted to highlight it here because we do have some counties that were affected by Fred and certainly had homes flooded. Um, there's one that we uh, didn't put on here, um, but if a home or structure is what's called substantially damaged, meaning that's a specific flood ordinance term, meaning the home was flooded and the cost of repairing it is above 50% of the fair market value of the structure, not the replacement costs of the fair market value of the structure. And as we all know, a lot of, you know, a lot of rural areas, a lot of uh, riverine flooding happens to, to, to low income uh, populations. But if that structure is been, is what we call substantially damaged, and it meets that, you know, 50% of uh, repair costs is greater than 50% of market costs, uh, and it's located in the SFHA, you know, also known as the 100 year flood zone that is also automatically cost effective. So if we have any Fred counties on that are listening and have homes that were flooded, um, you know, and, and they're in, in dire straits, um, not, not able to repair because they would have to make the home, um, compliant again, what substantially damage means is if you're you if you meet that threshold you cannot repair that structure without making it 100 percent compliant with the new flood codes which in most cases means elevating which in most cases is cost prohibitive um then you would uh, those people would automatically qualify even if it was over 323,000, and certainly those homes can be purchased at pre-storm fair market value so um, you know, we didn't want to put all that into the slides here, but if there are any uh, Fred counties out there, Fred municipalities out there that are in that situation, 
uh, please reach out. We've already talked to one one town uh, that it may be a, that it may apply. Might be an out. Uh, might be a, a a solution for homeowners that are uh, really have no other options at this point. Let's see. Okay. Uh, okay, we got the brick twenty twenty one. All right, thank you, Rich. Uh, what does it mean per story? We got that one more. Beth mentioned a BCR of one is needed. Does that mean the costs cannot uh, exceed estimated savings, or is the value based on more co complex calculation? No, you're absolutely right. It's it's the cost cannot exceed the estimated savings. So to you know, make it, let's use an easy, let's use a culvert, you know, sort of as an example. So you have an old culvert that either the structure itself gets washed out every year because it's way too small and the DPW guys got to go out and spend a few grand to fix it. And or, you know, it's causing a backup, causing damage to other properties, you know, in the area. And you want to replace it with a 50 year structure um that will you know increase flow protect it make sure it doesn't wash out you know to a hundred year event or whatever the case may be well then what the software is going to do is take that past damage you know or again you could use future damage but let's say past damage in this case and it's going to say you put it all into the bca bca software that BCA software says, well, over the next 50 years, which is the useful life of your new structure, this thing is going to result in, you know, $500,000 in more damage. Um, so then you look at it, you, your DPW guy say, yeah, I can replace that thing for, you know, 250000 Well, then your BCR is two, um, would be a, exactly two. If it was exactly 500,000 to replace it, um, you'd have a BCR of exactly one. Um, but your question, Katie, is exactly correct. Your predicted damage uh, has to exceed the cost of the solution to fix it. Any other questions? We have about seven minutes left in the hour. Uh, so definitely, you know, if there's anything else that you think of, so you can pop it in or, or like that said, you can raise your hand and we can take you off mute maybe. All right, well, Like I said, we will uh, we definitely will plan on having more of these. And and again, if you have a specific, you know, from here, you know, the takeaway I would have is if you guys have an idea of a project, um, and you want some more sort of, hey, I need some more guidance, um, before I um, uh, before I even take a a crack at it, certainly reach out. We can answer some. Some questions for you, but I, I think the you know, the, the 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 way to start is to get the software, get it downloaded. If you're working with vendors, a lot of you know local localities may, um, may be having, um, you know, their engineering firms or whatever, look at these things. Um, you know, they they can download it. They can, you know, take a take a crack at uh, at, at starting a, a ABCA um, and email that in and we can assign it you know to the staff you know Mark is just one of several BCA staff uh, that we have he was uh, free today to help us help us on the call um, but in total we have four BCA experts that are standing by to help out uh, applicants um, you know, our goal is to get everyone to get something 
uh, to us so that we can really help you vet it quickly to see if it's got legs, you know, or not. And, you know, that's if, if, if it doesn't, we'll tell you that. But um, then from there, we want to, you know, get them through the door by the, the deadline. And then we'll have time after that deadline to continue to work with you to get it uh, more developed um, so that by the time the FEMA deadline rolls around, you know, we have really, really well buttoned up applications that should, uh, you know, be expedited through the FEMA process. Um, hey, you know, Thad, we do yeah. have, uh, we do have a hand raise. Oh, okay. Um, Alicia, are you able to unmute Alan Horowitz? Or unmute everybody so Alan can talk. Oh, there there we go. Go. Alan, you are unmuted. All right. Uh, let me tell you, it's been very frustrating. I can't find how to send the message that I've been, I typed. <laughs> oh, it's just not Sorry, a spot. Alan. <laughs> I'm, I'm maybe because I'm using a Mac. I don't, I don't know. The Mac does not allow me to get on uh, the BCA toolkit. I tried a number of times. It I get to a point and then it, it freezes. So Mark, that's, is that something you usually because a, a Mac Apple products typically do don't always play well uh, with Word. Uh, Mark, do you have? Or I should say, uh, Microsoft, they don't always play well together. Mark, do you have um, some advice for Alan in regard to utilizing an Apple product in uh, the BCA world? Okay. Uh, hi, Alan. Uh, this is Mark Diaz. I, I'm unfamiliar with Mac normally, but to this point, normally, yes, most Microsoft products like Excel don't work uh, traditionally well in a Mac environment. Uh, there is an Excel online option available if you have Office 365 through your company or local office, and it may work through the web browser, but if that has issues, I would just ask kindly for a message uh, to us, and I will gladly research it. I may even reach out to the BCA helpline on your behalf just see if there's technical issues from the, literally the Mac side of the world that may be very different for us normally working in a Microsoft environment. And I just want to get you the best answer on that. Okay. But okay thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. Um, a question that I typed out, our ambulance core building uh, has an emergency generator that failed. And we're our building is used as an emergency emergency shelter for the North Rockland region that's in Rockland County and goes up into southern uh, Orange County. And without a generator, we are out of business as an emergency shelter for cooling, warming, or any other disaster that happens to hit the area. Uh, I went online on the FEMA line on uh, Department of Homeland Security to see if we could still operate as a shelter. And basically you really can't. They strongly recommend that you need an emergency generator in order to operate as a shelter. So uh, for a new generator, I've already raised two thirds of the cost through donations uh, and, and uh, pe local people made donations and some companies donated. We have two thirds of the cost, so we only need $20,000 to com complete the purchase of a new generator to replace the one that uh, failed. 
do I still, that's a long question for a short answer, I know. <laughs> right, do, right, right. Do I still need to fill out a BCA? So the short answer is yes, right? So the, uh, uh, the, the benefit cost analysis is based on the entire project cost even if you're paying a sizable portion of that cost, therefore reducing the federal share, right? So the way FEMA would look at that is, um, is that the, uh, let's say the whole project cost was, you know, $100,000 um, and you're paying all but, uh, like you said, all but $20,000. Well, that would be a 20% uh, local, 80% federal share, or I'm sorry, 20% FEMA, 80% local share, which would, is advantageous to everybody, the FEMA, the state, because they're going to spread that money around. But FEMA, in order for FEMA to consider it cost effective, has to do it on the entire project. That said, it's an emergency. Are you are you increasing the size of the generator? Are you? Is there? No. No. Nope. Okay. Not increasing it. It it just the uh, the generator was basically had design flaws. The company so much told us. Okay. All right. So let's assume you know I, I don't want to you know say that you know it wouldn't be eligible for any reason on the call. But we would certainly have Mark and the team, you know, vet that fine that fine point more with you. But that said, let's assume that it is and you know it's an eligible project. Um, it still could be cost effective, right? It's a shelter for a large amount of people. It includes emergency services, et cetera, et cetera. So generators for these type of facilities are eligible, right? It's not the, doesn't sound like it would be the pre-calculated benefit for hospitals, um, but certainly it's what we would call a critical facility as defined by you guys. It's a shelter, it's a place where you dispatch emergency vehicles. So it's in our eyes and FEMA's, it's a critical facility. It could still qualify. <laughs> Um, the timing is such, you know, that it would be, um, you know, is this something, uh, you know, are, are, when it, when is your anticipated construction? When is your, when are you looking to do it? If we could do it tomorrow, we would start. <laughs> right. right. So that, you know, the other, the, the, the other consideration, and again, this, you know, it's for you guys to think about, but. You know, the FEMA process is such that we, we will get these things to FEMA uh, as quickly as we can, but uh, the current deadline to FEMA, um, you know, is the end of the year, and then they will, you know, answer them as quickly as possible, and there's a, a state contracting process that, you know, typically takes about uh, 90 days. So, you know, again, I think, you know, the, the, the the county could you know manage all those things and and if if it works for you great but I just want to be real when it comes to you know the, how quickly these funds you know make their way through um, the federal government to to the locals make sense well, I'm very much aware <laughs> how grant money uh, right is is takes forever. I, I would say probably if you again um, could um, you know get get us a um, you know take a crack at it or reach out to our our, our hotline you know to our um, email address you know one of the team can walk you through it and maybe quickly vet it to see if it would be cost effective or not because I'd hate to have you guys hold it up um, you know if it if it doesn't make the eligibility bca requirement um but we can got that quickly and um, then you could make decisions from there okay i have already sent in uh, the application yep oh, okay. we have that all right yep. all right well we can get that assigned then and um beth we could talk about it offline but uh yep. get, get with the team on that one okay 
All right. Well, thank you, you very it. much for your time, Ted. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. And we are just a little bit over, but if uh, there are any other questions, um, raise your hand, type it in, or you know, if you if you want to kind of chew on it a little bit, you can always send us an email. Yes, I believe Mark had a hard stop at 11 to yeah. assist an applicant. Mark, I, I know you have to go. Feel free to drop. And I don't see any other hands up or any other comments um, uh, in the Q&A, but again, if you think of something after, you know, we get offline, please email us. We will uh, get back to you as soon as we can uh, with whatever uh, answer we can at that moment, or, you know, even just to say, let me look into it and get back to you again. But not seeing any additional questions or not seeing any additional hand raise uh, in our attendee list. Uh, thank you all for joining. It was a great turnout. We had some great questions. Um, and again, like Bob said, we have a, an application development webinar coming up tentatively scheduled for uh, March 2nd and uh, additional BCA webinars uh, to help vet some of these additional questions and information that's going to come down the line. So again, if no further questions uh, or comments from you, Thad. Um, no, thank you, I everybody. Hope everyone, yeah, thank you, everyone. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Take care, Beth. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, Alan.